you will walk. If you can't run, you will run. If you can't shout, you will shout. Walk this way. You unravel me with the melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. songs of 
out there. That's all faith is. It's trust. A wife is supposed to trust her husband, and a husband is supposed to trust her wife, okay? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It depends on their lifestyle. If they're in the world, you ain't got no trust. But through Jesus Christ, you will. Just like getting in and starting your car. You got that, you believe that it's going to start. You don't think about it, you just do it. That's the way trusting in Jesus Christ is. Mm -hmm. You just keep going. Yeah. Okay. Now, John 1, verse 12, 13. says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We're supposed to be born of the blood and the will, not of the uh, blood, not of the will, but of God. We're supposed to be in God. Alright, now we have Titus 3. 5. It says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so right there it says that we're, we're going to be washed, in, washed of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So that's our spirit within us. Okay, it's going to be done. It's going to be renewed. It's going to be changed. All right. And Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, so we got a renewing of the mind right there. This is all what born again means. It's a change. It's a wash. A change in our total body and trusting in Jesus Christ. So we go down now to verse, back to verse 3 of John 3.3. 3. He says, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Okay. We'll go to Luke 20, 17, 20 to 21. And when he was demanded that the Pharisees, When the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God commands, cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, so that's scripture telling us that the kingdom of God is within us. Okay, it has to be a change within us. And this is the only way that we're going to be able to go to heaven is the change, is being born again. Okay? It's not always what we want, but it's what God wants. That's right. Okay? There's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mark 10, 15. I know it's a lot of jumping around. What that tells us is, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he will not enter therein. It's only one way. Believe as a little child. We were kids. Mom and Dad used to say something. Like we're going to the candy store, going to get ice cream or whatever. Or even a whooping. You can bet your booty you're going to have it. Okay, that's the same way with God. You walk with God. He said it. I believe it. That's that settles right. it. That's right. Amen. Okay, that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Too many people are putting things into this that should not be. That's right. You know, God is. The only way. Okay, now we have verse 5. John 3, 5. It says, Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto thee, 
No, four. Sorry. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? In verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I had a lot of questions and fights on this one. Some scripture says that is being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Other scriptures says it's not. Well, I fought for days on this. My wife and I argued over a certain this passage. Mm -hmm. And I got so hot, I just told her I didn't want to hear nothing more <laughs> about it. And I went in the room and I started pulling the books out. And I started getting on the internet. Mm -hmm. You know what? Sometimes they're right. Yay! Yes, Lord. Sometimes they're right. That's right. They can, they can be a, a hindrance, but they can also be a blessing in disguise. This is what I found out on this for verse 5. Born of water. What, what does he mean? Okay, water is usually used with washing. Let's go to Ephesians 5, verses 26 and 27. He says, Now we are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So you hear it by by uh, by coming to church too. This is why we should come to church. Forsake not the assembling of ourselves. Okay. okay? So we heard it. We eat it by reading it. We listen to it. We hear it by that. In Hebrews ten twenty two. Let's see what that says. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. There is water. There is a washing of our conscience, our mind. Jesus. The greatest part of walking for Christ is the battle of the mind. Mm -hmm. That's devil's playground. That's right. Okay. I guarantee you, if you, the closer you get to Christ, the more dirtbag is going to be coming after you. And that's how you know you're on the right track. Because he won't, he won't do nothing else. He can't do nothing else. But that fight that you have in your mind, your soul, your spirit, that's where the fight is at. That's right. Okay, so now, in verse 5, he tells us, be born of the Spirit. If we're clean by the washing of the Word and the Spirit, we'll have to start to change. You will have a new mind. You'll have a new walk in life. This is where the Spirit should control your body and not your body controlling your spirit. Uh -huh. And a lot of times this is where fasting comes in. To fight the body. Yes. All right. We're supposed to be a new person in Christ. Now, he's going to keep fighting us to come and walk on the side that we don't want to walk, that we come out of, which is the world, or the fleshly side. There's a fleshly side and a spiritual side. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6.20, we were bought with a price. We'll go to verse 19. What? We know not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have God, and you are not your own. For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. When you were born of the water and you were washed and you were regenerated, that old spirit is gone. 
that new spirit came in. At that point, it's up to us whether we walk in that spirit, God's spirit, or we turn and go back to the world. This is why faith comes in, where it's one step at a time. Yep. This is called blind faith. But walking in blind faith is better than walking in the world, because you walk in the world, you're going to have the troubles. You're going to have the headaches of what you did in the world. Yeah. Where you walk in the spirit, peace, joy. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's just a couple of the benefits. And the closer you get to God, He keeps adding to you. John 15.3 says that no, I, we did that one, so I uh, 1 Corinthians 5.20 with all the price, I did that one. Okay, Ezekiel 36.24-27 Now this is going in, in the Old Testament to show you something that it was not just for the New Testament. This is what it says. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them this sprinkling of the water upon you cleaning you of all unfilthiness cleansing you giving you a new heart giving you a new spirit change in Jesus Christ comes whether you want it or whether you don't want it. Mm -hmm. If you want it, it's there. If you don't want it and you go back to the world, guess what? Mm -hmm. Kingdom of God mm -hmm. won't be within you. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Unless we become as little children Believing and trusting in Jesus, it's not going to work. We can't enter in if we don't have a clean and new heart or a clean and new spirit. That's right. Verse 6 says in John 3, That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit, born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not what I said unto, the, unto you, ye, you must be born again. You must be born again. Now, that's about two times that he said that in a couple verses. So he's really stressing that we have to walk for Jesus Christ, change within our hearts, within our minds, within our souls, within our actions. Okay, the flesh is, is, uh, is an earthly realm, which we see. We can't see the spiritual realm unless God opens that up to you. And the spirit is a spiritual realm. It's a heavenly realm. Romans 8, 6 tells us, For to be carnally minded is death, and to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So we have life and peace, or we have death. Mm -hmm. That's right. That decision is up to us. That's right. All right. Verse 11 of that same chapter says, But if the spirit of him that is raised up, Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. The same Spirit that took Jesus up into heaven dwells within us. That's what he's saying there. Eight thirteen, no, uh, verse 13 of that same chapter. 
he gives us a warning. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, but if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Amen. Amen. So what he's saying is, if if you live after the flesh, you're going where you don't want to go, uh -huh. which is hell. That's right. But if you through the Spirit do mortify or kill the flesh, the deeds of the body, you shall live. He talks a lot about the body and the flesh. We have to get the flesh under subjection. Once you get that flesh under subjection, it's closer. It's, it's better walk. All right. 14. Yeah. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are we sons of God? Yeah, yeah. Or are we walking after the world? Mm -hmm. Galatians 5, 16 also tells us about the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So if we walk in the Spirit and walk through God the way God wants us to walk, we don't have to worry about the flesh. It's going to be a fight, but it's going to be an easier fight with Christ on our side than us being on our own. Chapter, yeah, John 3, chapter, yeah, John 3, verse 7, talks about being born again, a transformation, a new man, a person, a renewing of the mind and of the spirit, and a change in our bodies. But we don't have to worry about the body controlling us, but we can control the body. That's right. This is what God wants us to do. He wants the spirit to control us. Yeah. His spirit. Mm -hmm. Not the spirit of the world. Not the spirit of anybody else or anything else, but the spirit of God. Yeah. Verse 11, John 3, 11 says, that Verily I say unto thee, we speak what we do know and testify that we have seen and you shall and and you receive not our witness if I have told you earthly things you believe not how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things if we don't believe in earthly things that he has teaches us or what he writes in his word how can we believe of the things that he talks about in heaven a lot of people don't want to believe the whole truth. They just want to pull and pick of things that they want. This is wrong. What I'm saying is we have to get back to the way it used to be. Loving Christ. Getting down on our knees and praying with a true heart. God knows our hearts before we even say anything. Whether it's true or whether it's false. We should not praise God or worship God in the flesh. We should praise and worship God in the spirit. Right. Amen. Okay. What I'm saying is, down here, we have rules and regulations through the police, through the government. Jesus Christ has rules and regulations to get into heaven. The same as down here. Well, not the same, but different rules and regulations, but it's still rules and regulations. That's right. Okay, to get to heaven. We don't follow them rules and regulations down here. We're going to wind up in jail or, or worse, okay? That's the same way God. We're either going to follow his rules and regulations and make it in, or you work of iniquity, depart from me. I never knew That's you. That's right. Yeah, it, it's, it's a hard choice, but that's the facts of the Bible. No. Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. He's always going to be the same, okay? The way, the way he judged people in the back, or in the Old Testament, that's the way he's going to work on the New Testament people, or live during the New Testament times. He says in 1 Corinthians 6.20 that we were bought with a price. 
That was his life. Amen. And we can't live for him the right way. We can't trust in him the right way, the way he wants us, but yet we want to go to heaven. Something's wrong. Yes. Man is starting to make their own ways in the churches. Mm -hmm. In the way we believe. We have to get back to the Bible the way God says it. Amen. Our bodies is a temple of the Holy Ghost. He tells us that water, you can't have bitter water or sweet water out of the same faucet. This is so much the way he wants us. He can't be mean and angry and hateful one second yes. and then turn around and love God. Yes, Amen. that's right. It's not right. That's right. John, uh, John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whosoever believeth in him should not... I forgot that one. Perish, but have everlasting life. Okay. He died for us. Are you working in Christ, with Christ in the way that we're supposed to? Or are we walking in the world and want the benefits of heaven. It don't work. It don't work at all. That's right. Amen. Uh, this is all I have, Pastor. ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray, lay hands on you and your need. And expect signs, wonders, and miracles in your life. Starting today, you will never be the same. If you would like to schedule a speaking engagement, contact our ministry. All glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen.